Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of CJ's Coins and Crafts. This is a review a recap of the last nickel box that I was able to to go through and I was very happy with how it turned out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list. So for the forens, I ended up getting three Canadians. I got a 1982, a 1983, and a 2006. So we'll take a look at those. Nineteen eighty two, nineteen eighty three, and two thousand six. So, this is actually the most, um, the highest number of Canadians that I've actually gotten in a nickel box. Um, but uh, still, the rest of the box was really good, so I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not mad. So in the 50s, I found two 54 Denvers, a 54 Philadelphia, two 57 Phillies, three 59 Denvers, and a 59 Philly. In the 40s, I found two 1940 S's, uh, a 41 Philly, Denver, and San Francisco. So I found all three mints uh, in one year uh, in this box. I found a 46 Philly and a 46 San Francisco. And I found a 47 Philly and a 49 Philly. So a lot of Philadelphia and, and San Francisco um, mints uh, minted nickels in the 40s um, that normally I would get a lot more in the Denver's. So and in the 40s, I only got one Denver uh, minted coin. So that's I think that's pretty cool. So let's get into some of the special ones. So the first special one is a 2009 Denver. So and that's this one right here. So if you guys don't know, the 2009 is a low mint year. So any of any of the 2009s that you, that you happen to come across, uh, go ahead and save them um, because they are a what what some people might call a, a key date. Um, just because the mintage was much lower than in the uh, the the previous years and the following years so 2009s are the are um uh a good one to find and then the next special one other than 2009 is a buffalo yep we found another buffalo so it is really worn um it's really slick uh even it so i look down here and it doesn't look like that there is a mint mark um, so this will be a Philadelphia minted. Um, so it looks like that maybe somebody tried using Nicodate, um, just because, like right there, you can see that it's it's darker around the date area. So it, it appears that somebody attempted to use Nicodate to, uh, which is an acid, uh, to pull the uh, date out of, but was not successful. Um, so. I, I don't mind. Uh, I still like these coins, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. Okay, so now for my uh, second to last special one is a 1988 Denver offset or a MAD. Uh, the MAD is a misaligned die. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So this is the one that I found. There's a 1988, and you can see how much of the rim is is it basically exposed on this side, and it's basically cutting off the top of the letters on this side, um, on the on the right side. Now if I flip the coin over. Uh, you guys can see that the reverse is is perfectly centered. It's struck perfectly um, it, it, in the center like it's supposed to. Uh, so what happens is that the uh, the hammer die um, is uh, is misaligned in its holder. So when it struck this coin, it struck it offset. Um, so this is a great find. Um, I actually found uh, found this coin um, in the first couple of rolls um, and. Uh, I was stoked to find uh, to find an error like this one. So now for my super secret special coin um, in the nickels, and I wrote down 1964, which is the year that it is, and then SMS question mark. Um, if you guys don't know what the SMS set is, those are special mint sets. So there were some years um, in the middle to late 1960s that the mints did not produce proof sets 
in these years that they did not produce uh, proof sets, um, they produced special mint sets. Uh, so they were like um, almost proof-like um, mint sets, um, but not quite the uh, the uh, proof with the S, um, the S mint mark. They, they didn't produce those. Um, and here's why that I think that I found one of those coins. Um, so this right here is just a standard 1964. This is one of the better ones that I've found um, as far as condition. Uh, you can tell the back is, is really worn, but there's still a lot of luster. It doesn't have any major damages. There's still a lot of detail left. Um, this is the one that I found in a roll. So right away, you guys can see that that the field the fields on it are almost mirror. Um, there is a lot of luster in it. I mean, you can see on the back that, I mean, right here, that you can see that is basically a mirror. And that is a, a very well-defined feature, or, you know, well-known feature of a proof coin. Um, so that's why I think that this may be um, an SMS. And then I'll hold the, the edges of the coins up, and you guys can see how much different and how much worn this regular 64 is um, to the edges of this coin which are very square very sharp um, so and there's no mint mark on this because there should be one right back here um, but there's no mint mark so I am about 90% sure that with the shine on this thing and the luster on this thing um, that this is uh, a nickel that came out of a 1964 SMS. Uh, so the only problem that I have is that it actually has the beginnings of a um, of, of what we call circle of death, uh, which is that this ended up being the end coin on a roll at some point um, and got uh, got some damage on the, on the obverse of the face of the coin. Um, but this was a super special find. Um, I feel, and I'll do some more research, but like I said, I, I believe I'm 90% sure that this is a, is a 1964 SMS nickel um, based on the characteristics that's, uh, um, that are exhibited um, with the, um, the reflectiveness and the edge and just all of the features. It's got a lot more detail um, in place than a regular, you know, circulated 64 nickel. So I... I um, uh, let me know what you guys think. Put it in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you think that this is a 64 SMS? Or is this just a super nice, you know, super uncirculated, um, uh, regular 64 Philadelphia nickel? And then uh, the other thing that I was able to go through uh, tonight um, is some half dollars. So um, I was, uh, I've been trying to get to the bank and get some half dollars. And uh, I'm glad that I picked up the ones that I did. Uh, I did not find any silver, but I did happen to find some NIFCs. So this is a 2003 uh, Denver. So if you guys don't know, the NIFC is not intended for circulation. So uh, half dollar, uh, the Kennedy half dollars uh, passed um, 2000, 2001. Um, so 2002 and, and forward. Um, were not intended for circulation in IFC. So all of these coins are um, basically minted just for uh, for mint sets and collector sets. Um, so the first one was a 2000 Denver, and here I have two 2010 Philadelphias that I also found in these rolls. And the last coin is a 2012 Denver in IFC. So I'm super stoked. Uh, about finding four NIFCs tonight. So if you guys get a chance to look through some half dollars, um, uh, other than the silver, so um, Kennedy 1964 is a 90% silver, then 65 through 70 is a 40% silver, and then um, uh, uh, everything beyond 71 would be clad up to the NIFCs that started in 2002. So if you guys happen to look through... Uh, a Kennedy half dollars that's that's a basic overview of what you're looking for there are a lot of dive varieties and double dies that you can search for 
um, and you can look up on a variety of sources online to find those particular ones. Um, I have personally found two of the 1974 Denver um, double die obverse. Um, so if you guys you guys can uh, Google that and and check out what that what that is, but it's it's really cool. Um, you can see the defined doubling on the serif on the four, but. Uh, so that is the recap of the corn roll hunting that I did tonight. I have more videos coming. I'm trying to get them out as fast as I can. I appreciate it all the time that you guys are taking a, to come and watch my videos. Uh, please like this video. Uh, comment any, uh, any comments or thoughts or questions that you have in the comment section below. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you guys on the next box.